Welcome to EM Rapid 2024. Today, we are going to discuss the topic genital urinary trauma. In this module, we are going to discuss bladder injuries, renal injuries, urethral injuries, urethral injuries, and fracture of the shaft of the femur. First, we come to bladder injuries. Bladder injuries are classified into basically five grades based on the extension. Grade 1 is again subclassified into grade 1A and 1B. 1A is a conduction or an intramural hematoma, whereas 1B is a partial thickness laceration. Coming to grade 2, grade 2 is an extra peritoneal bladder wall laceration of size less than 2 centimeters. And grade 3 is an extra peritoneal laceration of size more than or equal to 2 cm or an intraperitoneal laceration less than or equal to 2 cm in size. Grade 4 is a laceration which is an intraperitoneal bladder wall laceration of size more than or equal to 2 cm. And finally, grade 5 is a laceration that extending into the full thickness of the bladder wall or into the urethral orifice, that is the trigon. Bladder injuries are classified into extra peritoneal rupture or intra peritoneal rupture. Coming to extra peritoneal rupture, the various causes of extra peritoneal rupture are pelvic fractures and proximal urethric injuries. The clinical features are inability to pass urine, blood at the tip of the meatus and deep perineal hematomas. The investigation of choice in the case of an extra peritoneal rupture is CT urography in a stable patient. We can also consider vitreating cystic urethrogram and retrograde urethrogram in certain cases. The management is police catheterization or suprapubic catheterization for 7 to 10 days. Then we come to intraperitoneal bladder rupture. In intraperitoneal bladder rupture, it mostly associated with surgeries like the hysterectomy and the cancer surgeries. It can be also seen in patients with a full bladder with lower abdominal injuries. The clinical features in the setting of an intraperitoneal bladder rupture, the patient can present with multiple episodes of syncopial attacks and peritonitis. The investigation of choice is CT urography and MCU and RG. And management in the case of an intraperitoneal bladder rupture is exploratory laparotomy with bladder repair in two layers with cholis catheterization or SPC. Second, we come to, come to urethral injuries. Urethral injuries are again classified into two types one is anterior and then is posterior urethral injury. The most common site of anterior urethral injury are the bulbar and the pinna injuries. The mode of injury in the case of an anterior urethral injury is either direct trauma or a straddle injury. The features, the cardinal features in the case of an anterior urethral injury is the superficial perineal hematoma or the butterfly shaped hematoma, which involves the penis and the scrotum. Coming to the clinical features, you can see blood at the tip of the meatus and inability to pass urine. Then we come to posterior urethral injury. In posterior urethral injury, the most common sites which are involved are the prostatic and membranous urethra. The mechanism of injury in the case of a posterior urethral injury is most commonly secondary to the pelvic fractures. The cardinal features in the setting of a posterior urethral injury as is the deep perineal hematoma, which involves the anterior abdominal wall and the upper one third of the thigh. On examination in the setting of a posterior urethral injury, we can see the raw modern sign, that is, a high riding or a floating prostate on deep rectal examination. The clinical features are we can see bladder distension in some cases. The investigation of choice in the setting of a posterior urethral injury is retrograde urogram. And coming to the treatment, 
In the setting of a trauma, never insert police catheterization if you are suspecting a urethral injury. If the patient is having a full bladder of, of if he is symptomatic, you can think about SPC, whereas the bladder is not full and the patient does not show any discomfort, then you can wait for the bladder to fill and you can give one trial of filtration. Now we come to the fracture of the shaft of penis. The pathology is that an erect penis during sexual intercourse there can be tear in the corpora vaginosa and tunica alginia. These are two mechanisms that can lead to the injuries to the shaft of the penis. Clinical features are you can sometimes see a popping sound, pain and swelling around the penis, and an egg plant deformity of the penis. Management is drainage of the hematoma and repair of the tear. Now we come to renal traumas. Renal injuries are classified into five grades. Grade one, there is no laceration, but there is a subcapsular hematoma or a small condition. Grade two is a laceration of depth less than one centimeter and or a perineal hematoma, which is confined to the perinatal tissue. Grade 3 is a laceration of size more than or equal to 1 cm depth with a vascular injury or active hemorrhage which is confined to the perinephric fascia. In grade 4 of renal trauma, you can see segmental vein or arterial injury and you can also see segmental or complete impact due to vessel thrombosis without active vein. Coming to grade 5, there is involvement of the main artery or main vein, or you can also see hilar avulsions. Devascularized kidney with active bleeding can also be seen. Coming to the management of renal injuries, as we told earlier, we classified it into five grades. Grade 1, 3, needs requires only conservative management and in grade 4 if there is a urinoma on uh, examination if that is found to be sterile you can think about digestively if it is an infected one you can think about the tail catheter trainings if there is vascular involvement we need to explore the retroperitoneum and consider repair the clinical features in the case of a real injury is the expanding hematoma, the pulsatile leak, or non visualization of IVU. These features point towards a vascular involvement. Coming to grade 5 real injury, we move ahead with partial or total nephrectomy. The various complications of renal injuries are hematuria, urinoma, AV fistulas, renal artery thrombosis, and infarct. And finally, come to the ureteric injury. The most common causes are surgeries and pelvic tumor resections. If the injury is realized during surgery, and if it is a partial tear, we will suture it with non-absorbable material. If there is a complete tear without the loss of sector, then you can think about anastomosis over the digestion. If there is a complete transaction with the loss of segment, you can think about the bovine flap repair. If the injury is realized after the surgery, then the presentation can be if there is a urinoma, you can think about digestion and pigtail drainage. The investigation of choice is CT urography or IV, and the treatment is repair. So, in this module, we have discussed the various types of genital urinary traumas, the bladder injuries, the urethral injuries. The renal injuries, the urethral and the fracture of the shaft of pins, and the management of and clinical features of those conditions. Thank you.